Hello, and welcome to the Wisconsin Facets webinar on supporting literacy at home in the summer. My name is Lori Karcher, and I am one of the grant directors at Wisconsin Facets. I am also the parent of an adult, a young adult with a disability, and she is joining me today. So if you hear her in the background, um, that would be Eve. I am also the parent of two typically developing teenage boys so um, lots of experience with, um, with the topic that we're, we're going to talk about today. So thank you so much for joining us and um, let's talk about supporting literacy at home in the summer. So today's webinar focuses on how important it is to keep children engaged in reading and literacy activities over the summer. We're going to cover some facts about the importance of summer reading, um, the definition or different definitions of literacy, uh, five components of reading and ideas for supporting those things during the summer and really at any time during the year, um, how to pick the right books, and we'll give you lots of ideas for supporting literacy in the summer and um, end with a ton of resources for you to check out um, after today's webinar. So let's look at some facts about why summer reading is important. <clears throat> when summer comes and children and families are busy with vacations and sports and swimming and so many other things, it's hard to find time for reading. But according to one scholastic study, students can lose up to three months of reading skills without practicing over the summer. And this is called the summer slide. The good news is that families can help their children avoid the summer slide and can maybe even help improve their skills over the summer. Um, research is clear that regardless of ethnicity, socioeconomic background, um, previous achievement, um, children who read four or more books that are at their appropriate reading level um, over the summer do better on reading comprehension tests in the fall than their peers who read one or no books over the summer. At the high school level, reading four to five books over the summer has a positive impact on your fall reading on their fall reading achievement, which could be comparable or similar to attending summer school. Again, um, it's important that to note that those um, those books have to be at an appropriate reading level for the, for the student. Um, research also shows that there's a very strong link between reading volume and reading proficiency. So the volume of reading is critical in the development of your reading proficiency. Volume is the, the amount of time the student spends reading and also the number of words they actually understand the meaning of as they read. So if families spend time reading with their children over the summer, not only will they avoid the summer slide, but their children's skills can continue to grow. So here are the results of a research study about children's views on summer reading. In response to the statement on your screen, I really enjoy books over the summer, you can see that Enjoyment of summer reading is the highest among younger children and girls. It drops as their age increases and among boys. On the chart for this study, you can see that between the ages of 6 and 17, about 6 out of 10 children, or 62%, say that they enjoy reading books over the summer. You can also see that even for 12 to 17 year olds, over 55% of the students that took the survey said they enjoy reading books over the summer. And as I already mentioned, more girls than boys um, say that they like summer reading. The main thing we want you to take away from this is that um, 44% of these of the students surveyed actually just say, I just enjoy reading. It's a fun way to pass the time. Um, and only 4% of children said that they read just to get prizes or rewards. 
However, if your child is one who does not like reading in the summer, you can definitely try using incentives. And that doesn't mean it has to cost you any money. Um, a good incentive might be if they read a certain number of minutes, they get to pick what you're having for dinner. Um, there are lots of other examples. Um, in, there's a handout called Ways to Keep Your Middle and High Schoolers Interested in Reading. And at the end of it, there are some ideas for incentive. So another fact from research, according to a report published by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, um, is that how well your child reads in third grade could be an indicator for how well they may do in high school and beyond. Um, it might seem to parents that your child has barely graduated from cut and paste projects in school before reading and math take center stage and you find yourselves opening books every night, listening to your child sound out words and helping them to understand the stories that they're studying. So what is the significance of third grade reading assessments um, when, when you're trying to predict a child's academic success? So, up until third grade, children are learning to read. And starting in the fourth grade, they're really more reading to learn. And so if the children doesn't, if the child doesn't have a good um, reading skill set at this time, it can directly impact their ability to learn the information that they're um, that they're getting from their classes and and um, inhibit them from succeeding in those subjects. Um, so when do parents' efforts really matter in the overall success of, of having their children? Of course. And so we're going to give you some, some ideas on how you can help to practice some of these skills and help them um, increase their proficiency. So Obviously, there are other benefits to reading at really at any level. Reading exercises our brain, improves our concentration, teaches children about the world, improves the vocabulary and language skills, and develops your child's imagination. And it turns out that the time that parents spend reading with their kids, including in the summer, not only is a great way to spend time together, but it helps them become, like I said, more, more proficient in their reading and will help them do better in school and will have a greater impact on their um, life success. Another fact to consider, um, one early literacy expert concluded that the only behavior measure that links significantly with reading scores is the number of books in the home. The more books in the home, the higher the reading scores. Another study of over 100,000 students found that access to print was critical in the children's ability to acquire literacy skills. So children whose parents have lots of books are nearly um, 20% more likely to finish college, according to this study. The number of books in the home is an even better predictor of college graduation than the education of the child's parents or the, their level of education. Um, a child from a home with 25 books will on average complete two more years of school than a child from a home that has no books. But regardless of how many books a family already has, each new book added to a home library helps the children get even further in school. So it's also important to consider that families can intentionally access print in your everyday environment. For example, reading print on the bus ads or looking at magazines at the laundromat or reading print on billboards or on roadsides uh, road signs, pardon me, or reading print on trucks or stores as you're outside can also um, give them that access to print um, when you start talking about those, those words that they're seeing. Um, there are other ways that you can get free or inexpensive books for your children, such as rummage sales, library sales. Uh, you might see those little free libraries that are around town where it's like you can take a book and add a book. Um, Goodwill, resale stores, and kids can ask for books as gifts for birthdays and holidays. So, um, and I know that a lot of programs in the schools uh, give away books at least once or twice a year as well.
So now we're going to talk a little bit about um, the different components of reading. So we've learned why summer reading is important, and uh, we're just going to briefly touch on these five components of reading, and we'll share some ideas of what you can do to support each one of those components as we go. So let's talk a little bit about what literacy is. Often when you hear the word literacy, most people think of literacy as just reading. <clears throat> but according to Webster's Dictionary, literacy is the state of being able to read and write. And literacy truly is much more than this. Reading is just one part of literacy and isn't exactly interchangeable. You can't interchange the words reading and literacy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Literacy includes talking, listening, traditional reading, reading aloud, listening to something being read aloud to you, interpreting pictures, creative play, scribbling and drawing, singing, and may include sign language or braille, among many other, um, many other activities. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction defines literacy as making meaning from text, including thinking critically about text, which happens primarily through reading. However, our understanding can be developed and supported by writing, listening, and speaking about text. Adding to that explanation, the word text can mean a book or other written or printed work, but it can also include photos, infographics, diagrams, videos, and even lectures. So when you think about the phrase making meaning from text, it's good to consider all of these different forms of text, especially when you're thinking about supporting literacy skills at home. So Reading is a really complex process. We often think that reading is just one single act, but our brains are actually doing a whole bunch of things at the same time when we sit down with a book. Five components of reading are on the slide. Phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and reading comprehension. These five things work together to create the reading experience. As children learn to read, they must develop skills in all five of these areas in order to become successful readers. We're going to do a quick description for each one and then share some tips that you can do at home to help build your skills related to that area, your child's skills and yours. <laughs> so the first one we're going to talk about is phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness means hearing and being able to identify and change the individual sounds that we hear in words. Phonemic awareness actually um, falls under a larger umbrella called phonological awareness. And phonological awareness is being able to identify different sounds that aren't specifically related to words. So it might be able to, um, being able to identify the difference between mom's voice and your brother's, you know, their brother's voice, or hearing a, a fire truck, a siren on a fire truck, and identifying that that is a sound that belongs to the fire truck. So that's phonological awareness. Phonemic awareness is directly related to sounds that you hear in words. Um, and phonemic awareness develops before you even connect those sounds to letters. So children need to be taught to hear the sounds in words that, um, and the different smallest sounds that words are made up of called phonemes. They need to recognize and use individual sounds in order to be able to read and spell words. For example, the word hat has three sounds, h, a, and t. Changing the first phoneme, the h, to a b sound changes the word to bat. Or taking the first phoneme off completely changes the word to at. So some things that you can do at home to help your children um, practice their phonemic awareness, and uh, many of these tips are coming from reading rackets, are you can play clapping and rhyming games with your child so that you can get them to start listening for those sounds. You can see um, how many words your child can think of that start with a specific sound like s, m, or ch. 
You can play with sounds in all different parts of the word. So the beginning, the middle, and the end. So for example, we have job, jot, and jog, where the difference is at the end of the word and not the beginning. And you can make up silly sentences such as nobody was nice to Nancy's neighbor and try to figure out, you know, ask your child what sound, which uh, in those words, what is the same sound that they hear? The next one we're going to talk about is phonics. So phonics means the predictable connections between the letters and the sounds. So here's where you're connecting those sounds that you're hearing to the letters that um, that represent the sound. So um, trying to get trying to help your children learn all the rules for connecting those sounds and letters can be difficult, uh, especially since words don't always sound the way they look. So for example, the A in cake is a long A, but the A in cat is short. If the word is short and begins and ends with a consonant, it's easier for the child to sound it out. So words like sun or tin are easier for them to recognize and sound out. If a word is irregular, like laugh or though, then the task of assigning sounds to letters to read or spell a word could become much harder for the child. So phonics includes learning letter sound correspondences, spelling patterns, syllables, and meaningful word parts. So when we were talking about um, adding different sounds to the beginning of the word and those rhyming words, knowing that changing those letters and sounds can change the entire word. Things that you can do at home in the summer related to phonics. Point to letters and letter combinations and ask your child to name their sound. You can say a sound and ask your child to tell you the letter that the sound represents. Again, you can look for words on signs, maps, billboards, cereal boxes in the morning, um, money, birthday cards. Point out the words to your child wherever you see them and say them out loud and have conversation about it. Encourage your child to write notes and emails and letters and even drawing pictures to express themselves um, can help make those connections and build those connections. You can make flashcards to go over with your child to help them learn some of those irregular words. Um, often those are called sight words. And you have a handout called Sight Words Lists and Activities that can help you to review some of those words with your children, especially over the summer to keep up that um, skill level. The next component we're going to talk about is fluency. Fluency means reading smoothly, accurately, and with expression. Reading fluently is not the same as speed reading. Fluency is like a bridge between being able to recognize a word and understanding the meaning of what you're reading. One of the best ways to improve fluency is by reading out loud and listening to others read out loud, especially when you listen to readers who use a lot of expression in their voice. So having your child even listen to audiobooks or watch, um, watch and listen to books on YouTube can help them to build skills in fluency by hearing how the words are being read and the different inflection in the reader's voice. Whoever would have thought that YouTube could help our children build their literacy skills, right? <laughs> Other things that you can do at home related to helping your child with fluency is you could read a page first and then have your child follow along or repeat it. You can help your child sound out words that they don't know when they get stuck. Listen to your child read the same passages. Pass in, pass in, oh my goodness, pages. <laughs> Have them read the same pages over and over um, so that they can smooth out the bumps in the road. Uh, sometimes reading those favorite books can really help improve their fluency skills. And you can try recording your child reading the same passage several times and then listen to the recording. It's really fun to see them light up and hear the difference between when they first started reading that passage and the end, the last time they read the passage. They can hear their own improvement. <clears throat> the next. Um, skill we're going to talk about is vocabulary. So vocabulary means the words we understand when we read in reading and listening. So the more words we know, the better we can communicate and the better we can understand and read 
um, in what we read and what we hear. Kids need to learn the meanings of words and know some strategies to find out the meanings of words that they don't know. So figuring out the words from context clues in, the, in what they're reading, using a dictionary, or even now you can ask Siri or Alexa to help you out. Um, kids have to learn how to use these words correctly and practice using them in sentences as well. So on your screen are some ideas um, for that parents can use to build their um, child's vocabulary. So again, lots of shared reading and talking about specific words. You can use magnets on your refrigerator, try making up a new word of the day or the week and see how many times you and your child can use the word throughout that day or week. Um, you can talk about different word parts and how they change the meaning of a word. So if your child knows the meaning of the word kind, then you can teach them, you know, the prefix un means not. And when you add un to kind, they'll know that unkind means not kind. And you can work with um, many different root words and um, prefixes and suffixes. Talk about the relationships between words. So words that have similar meanings like bucket and pail, and also opposites. Um, just talking about how different words are used and why you would use um, a certain type of word in a certain situation. So um, on the screen, you'll see there's a, a link to vocabularyco.il, and that has a ton of games um, for vocabulary for your kiddos. So the last one we're gonna talk about is comprehension. And comprehension is the reason that we read. We read so that we can understand what we're reading. Um, when we read, our brains are actually doing three things. They're trying to decode the word, so figure out what the word is. We're trying to recall if we've ever heard that information before so that maybe we can relate it to something or if it's something we're familiar with, and then compare it to other information to see if it makes sense. So if you decode the word in the sentence and it doesn't make sense in what you've read prior, then maybe that's not the right word and you need to resound it out or try again. <clears throat> Some of the skills that students need to learn related to text comprehension are um, the difference between reading like a narrative or a story and an expository text or text that has more factual information. They usually have very different um, structures. And so it's good for them to read both narrative and expository texts. Um, they need to learn how to understand and remember what they read. And so they might have some tips and tricks that they can figure out how they can uh, remember what they're reading. Um, they can relate their own knowledge or experiences to the text uh, using and using different, comprehen different comprehension strategies that they may learn in school can also help them. And they also need to be able to communicate with others about what they read. So here are some things that families can do at home in the summer to help your children with comprehension. Um, when reading with your child, if they get stuck, first ask them to try to use context clues, such as if they're reading a picture book, there might be a picture that um, gives them some ideas of what, what that word might be. Um, you can use retelling. Have your child read a page or a story to you and then retell everything that they can remember so that you can see if they're actually understanding or if they're just reading the words. And then you can discuss what your child has read. Ask your child questions about the book. Who is the main character? Where did the story take place? When did the story happen? What part of the book or story did you write, like the best? Uh, what do you think will happen next? Um, how does the story compare to something else they've read? And uh, many other questions that you can think about to, to discuss the book with your child. You can also try to use a graphic organizer. So the graphic organizer is an outline that will help them figure out those things, writing down the title, the author, who the characters are. So this is an example um, of what a, a graphic organizer might look like. You can ask your child to try to connect the um, events in the book with experiences they had in their own life. Um, 
which again, it's helpful to give, try to give your child as many background experiences as you can, such as visits to the zoo or museum, activities in the park or going camping, even cooking with you or shopping, hiking, lots of, lots of ideas for um, getting them different experiences so that they can relate it to what they're reading. And the more experiences the child has, the more they can connect what they're reading to what they know. So you should have a handout also called More Resources that has some um, other great resources um, to give you some ideas about these different components of literacy that we just covered. I just want to mention that um, as, as we talked about, reading is a complex process. And not just because a student doesn't master all the components of reading doesn't mean that they're not literate. There are many different levels of, of literacy. Some students may have difficulty with different components of literacy. So some examples, a student with a language disability or ADD or ADHD may have difficulty with reading comprehension. A student with significant cerebral palsy might not be a fluent oral reader. <clears throat> a student with central auditory processing disorder or other communication disorder may have a difficulty with phonics and students with reading disabilities such as dyslexia might need unique instruction based on the effects of their disability and um, for some children with disabilities we might be looking for very different skills related to literacy other than knowing words and picking up a grade level book and reading it for example You might be looking for signs of literacy that um, the child is recognizing pictures or common words. Um, if they're choosing specific books to be read to them, it shows that they have a preference. And so that shows that they have an awareness of what, you know, what's in those books. Um, just showing awareness of being read to. Are they looking at the reader? Are they paying attention to what's going on? Are they following along in the book? Um, or just simply even having an awareness, a print awareness, which might be just getting the idea of what print is, learning how to hold a book and turn the pages so that you don't see the child is holding the book upside down and doesn't have an idea of you know, which way the story is supposed to flow. They might go through and just be talking about the pictures that they see in the book. Um, and I just want to make sure that you know that um, parents can check, you can check your child's IEP to make sure that if your child's current evaluation information shows that they have some reading challenges, there should be some goals related to literacy in their IEP. Um, during the summer is a perfect time for parents to focus on some of those skills and you can talk to your um, team and talk to the teacher and see if they can help you figure out what you can do that are specifically related to your child's literacy goals that are in their IEP. And I just wanted to bring this um, resource to your attention. It's the WCAS guide on how to provide students with IEPs access to their grade level curriculum using text to speech. Um, so there is there is a link on here that again, if you download the um, if you download your handouts, all of the links will be on the PowerPoint um, presentation piece. And if you're having trouble with that, please feel free to to contact me again at the end and we can email them to you or get them to you in another way because I wanna make sure you get these resources. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to pick the right book for your child um, that's at an appropriate reading and interest um, and ability level for your, for your child. So one of the secrets to helping children find just the right books is to determine the purpose for the for why they're reading. So um, our young literacy learners need to experience how to choose a book based on a purpose. So you need to decide um, is your the purpose for enjoyment? Is it to learn something? Is it to listen to someone else read or is it purpose for them to read it by themselves? Um, as an aside, if you go on YouTube and you put the name of a book in, you can see if there's someone on there reading a book that your child may already have at the house or that they can follow along um, 
when someone reads a book. And a lot of them might have um, have the words on the screen as they're reading so they can follow along, or you can always click on the closed caption. And so when the person is reading the book, they can also follow along with the with the closed caption so that they can make that connection to the to the words they're hearing, to the words that they're seeing on the screen. Uh, sometimes a child might be motivated to read a book by the title or even by a friend's recommendation. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was going through this, I was thinking about uh, one of my one of my sons when they were younger was invited to a birthday party, and I was asking the um, parent, "What can we get the their child for a birthday gift?" And she had requested that um, my son pick out some books that he likes that are fiction because her child was very much um, focused on reading just factual books, which is not a bad thing, but she wanted to expand um, what, you know, his options for reading. And she thought that maybe if his friends would recommend the books or they could, you know, um, he might be more likely to try it out. And then they could also even talk about them, right? And so another thing, right, they can talk about the exciting things that are happening in the books that they're reading. So exposure to reading all different types of books, including poetry, picture books, fiction, nonfiction, it helps children to find books they'll enjoy um, that inspire them and will make them want to read more, keeps it exciting and um, and gets them to explore different options. So finding the right books for children, especially young children, can sometimes be overwhelming, especially if you go to the library. There's so many books to choose from, uh, bookstore, online, and even at home. Um, if you have a ton of books, it's hard always, you know, to, to look at that and become overwhelmed. So if you allow your children, if you maybe you pick a couple of books for them and let them choose those. So um, when we think about finding the right books for younger children, we can put them into two categories. We can put them into read aloud books, which are books that are read to them, and early reading books, which are the books that the child begins to read on their own. Um, to help your child, as I mentioned, to help your child pick out the books, it's a good idea to pull maybe three or four books to narrow the choice, and then choosing the book isn't so overwhelming for them. So show your child how a, how to choose a book. Have them look through the book, have them look at the cover, open the book to see the pages and the pictures, read the back cover, see if the topic of the book looks interesting, and then have them choose a book from, from the, the short list that you've given them. Um, Oftentimes, children have a favorite book at home that they like to read over and over. And this is great because then they can help you read the book, right? It helps them develop a sense of story and start thinking of themselves as a reader. Um, you can also check to see, so if you're reading these books, you can check to see if they're paying attention and change some of the words as you read them. I love to do this to my daughter. So I'll read a story with her at night that I know she knows, and then I'll change the words at the end. She's like, no, mom, that's not how that goes. And so it shows me that she's she's following along and she's she's comprehending you know, what we're reading and knowing that I am not reading the right words on the page and she'll correct me. Um, so it's kind of fun to just play with books in those ways too with your kids and that maybe it won't seem like such a chore. Um, you can help your child not only develop a love for reading, but um, develop some of those concepts about print and reading skills and, and help them get that good understanding of how a story is supposed to go. So the other thing you can do is you can stop and talk about the pictures, talk about the pictures in the book and um, ask questions and answer questions from your child. Um, and when you're done reading the book, you can talk about the characters, you can retell what happened, all examples of, you know, things we've already talked about um, previously. Here are just some ideas for some possible read aloud books for you. And again, there they'll be in the presentation when you download the handouts. Um, for early reading books, 
to select early reading books, you want to encourage your child to go on a picture walk through the book um, before they start reading the words, just to see if it's something that they would be interested in. You can also talk about, they can look at the pictures and give you some ideas of what they think the story is going to be about. And then that makes it exciting to find out if they were right or not. Um, you can have your child look for new or tricky words as they do that little um, picture walk through the book. Um, and it just, again, encourage them to, to talk about it and identify different story elements. Um, before you even before you even begin to read it, just talking about the book um, helps get get their get them excited about reading it. And here are some ideas for some um, early reading books for for early books for early reading. Um, book again, books that have a lot of rhyming words are a great choice because it can help them with decoding and um, and they're a lot of fun. <laughs> So here is a really simple way to figure out how to help your child choose books, especially if they're a little bit a little bit older. The five finger rule, if you've not heard of it, is awesome. So here's how it works. You ask your child to open a book that they're interested in um, to any page and just start reading. And every time your child finds a word that they don't know, they hold up a finger. If they can't read, if they have five or more fingers held up, then that book is going to be a difficult challenge for them. If they can read all of the words, then the book is likely too easy for them. And maybe you should try find a different book. Um, if they struggle with three, two or three of the words, then the book is at an appropriate reading level. But I do want to say, don't underestimate the willingness of a child to read a difficult book. It challenges them, it ex expands their, um, their skill level, and then, and you can be right there to help support their efforts in reading that challenging book. So here's another way you can find uh, to match your child's uh, reading level. And this works well, especially with older children. So to find the ideal reading level materials, you can use this Lexile reading system. And keep in mind that a Lexile level is a way to measure the reading level of a book, not the reading level of your child. So it just helps you kind of give you a range of, of where your child's um, skills might lie in, in this Lexile system. So the Lexile uh, measures start at 5L. The higher the number, the more difficult the text will be. Anything below 10L is considered a beginning reader. And the highest Lexile level is 2000L. So if you go to the Lexile reading system, and you'll see, you can see the link on the screen for the um, website, you can get an approximate range of Lexile um, scores for your child, kind of depending on their grade level. Or perhaps you can ask um, at school if your teacher know, you know, if they work with this system, you can get their Lexile level from them. So let's take a look at how this would work for a second grader. So in the box where it says grade level, you put two. So we put two for second grade. You can pick grades all the way up to 12th grade. Um, you can ask your child or you can decide whether you want to do easy, um, just right, or difficult. For here, we chose easy. And then when we did that, a Lexile level score came up of 345L to uh, 1000 or 1100L. So let's say you want to see if a specific series of books that your child is interested in fits in the reading level range. So we chose the Junie B. Jones series and went to the quick search box at the top of the page, um, at the top of the web page, and typed in Junie B. Jones. And here were the results. So it fits within that range, that Lexile range that we have from 345 to 1100 for that second grade reading level. And you can try it for other series as well. So for example, with the Boxcar Children series also fits within that, um, 
that Lexile level. So it's a pretty useful tool for parents and others to use in help picking out appropriate reading level books for children of all ages. And um, I, especially over the summer, if you're looking for ways to um, to find books that are at the appropriate reading level, this is a great site to try. Um, two more things I wanted to point out about the site is that you can find books in different areas of interest. So if your child has a specific area of interest, so for example, we put in um, at the bar at the top, Native American, and 37 book suggestions came up under that topic with the Lexile level that we were looking at, including these two that are here. And you can also look at, uh, look for books in Spanish. So you can type in, um, the, there's a checkbox at the top says books in Spanish and over 7,000 books came up in Spanish that were at this, um, in that Lexile level we were looking at. So I encourage you to try using this Lexile website to develop a list of appropriate uh, reading level books for your child. Um, and then also you can use the list to find books when you're out, you know, you can bring that list with you to look at the library or the bookstore or give the list out to people if you're looking for birthday gifts or other, other reasons for folks that can help you build your child's library. So in this last section, <coughs> excuse me, in this last section that we have today, we're gonna look at how much a child should be reading. Um, we're going to look at a few literacy activities and more ideas for you that you can do in the summer to support literacy for your child. So some people say that kids should read 15 to 20 minutes a day or a few minutes several times a day for very young children. Um, 10 minutes for young elementary kids. But sometimes getting your child to read that amount of time can be hard, especially in the summer when they wanna be running around outside and doing other things besides sitting down and reading with a book. Um, so the most important thing is not necessarily the amount of minutes that your child reads, but getting them to the point where they want to read. And so we talked about those different interests, looking for high interest um, uh, topics in reading. Um, to build, to you want to build their interest in reading, their drive to read, and their stamina to continue reading. So stamina is defined as a child's ability to focus and read independently for longish periods of time without being distracted or without distracting others. And that definition comes from reading rackets. How great would it be for you to call your child to dinner and they say to you, wait, I still have two more pages or chapters to read. Um, so here are a few suggestions for building stamina. First of all, vary the way that the reading is done. So especially for young children, this might include using silly voices. Um, you know, you're almost reading, you're acting while you're reading and you're, you know, becoming the characters and changing up the voices. Maybe you're singing part of the story um, as you go along and um, inserting things like, oh, so they saw a star and you're singing twinkle, twinkle, little star. Um, and also having the child read with you. So again, those stories that have um, phrases that are repeated or those stories that they read over and over and you, you stop the sentence and let them finish it. So making it more exciting and interactive. Um, for read alouds, uh, obviously uh, choosing books to read to your child that are interesting and engaging, that have multiple characters, that have um, lots of different places they can go and explore, you know, in their mind and their imagination. Um, you can have your child read to themselves. You can have your child read to someone else. Uh, my boys used to read to their older sister um, as they were, you know, they were learning to read and she had some difficulties. She enjoyed listening to them. And in my house, that was a win, win, win <laughs> because they were all occupied and I could get something done. <laughs> um, 
And it's important to celebrate that time that they spend reading so that they get enjoyment not only from the reading, but that they see it as a positive um, activity. So a few other ideas about how you can support your child's literacy at home, you can create a special reading corner. Um, this doesn't have to be in um, this doesn't have to be in their bedroom. It can be anywhere in the house where they feel comfortable reading. You can decorate it with fun signs, put some, you know, fluffy pillows in there and um, have a bunch of books available to them. Right. Um, as we talked about make sure that you have lots of reading material around the house and other places um, on the bookshelves but maybe on your coffee table or in your child's room or in the bathroom <laughs> always a good place to read um, try to keep the books out at your child's eye level so that they're easily accessible and um, it's going to catch their interest and maybe change them up you know maybe they see the same book and you switch it out and and put a different book there um, you can play board games that are focused on literacy skills like apples to apples, uh, which also has a junior version. And honestly, you don't even have to play it as the game. Um, at our house, we use the apples to apples cards to play charades. <laughs> so, um, you know, they're still utilizing their vote. They're still learning vocabulary. A lot of times on those cards, they might have little definitions about what the word is, um, especially for the, the regular version of apples to apples. Um, just using language and, and um, reading in different forms to make it fun. Um, you could turn the closed captioning on your television and, and have your child read along or read while they're watching a program. Um, if there's a movie uh, on TV or at the theater that's based on a book, we, you could read the book first as a family um, and then watch the movie. Uh, the rule at my house when my boys were younger was they had to read the Harry Potter book before they were allowed to watch the movie. And it worked for a while. Um, it didn't, we didn't get through the entire series. We still have some of the movies that are in their cellophane, but hey, it was worth a shot and it did work for a while. Um, and actually my, one of my sons realized watching the movie, he's like, wait a minute, they cut out a whole part. They cut out a whole section that was in the book. And so it was great to see them realize that, um, you know, that the movie doesn't always follow the book and they have, you know, obviously time constraints and things like that. But to see the difference between the book and the movie, um, take time to read as a family, set time aside, you know, uh, once a week in the house or something like that, where everybody can either read together or read their own their own book. Um, could be a group activity where one person reads and the other ones are listening and paying attention. Um, Share stories with your child if you see something in the newspaper or in a magazine um, and talk to them about it. And um, really just, you know, even a few minutes before bed, right? Uh, to, to have that routine of reading before bed. Um, again, we had, you know, a book that we would read every night and it got to the point where we could uh, recite the book. And if my husband was traveling, he could call and actually like recite the book while I was turning the pages. So it was great that he could still participate in that bedtime activity even when he was away. And I just can't, I can't overemphasize enough that summer learning is more than, more than just about picking up and reading a book. Uh, we learned at the beginning of the webinar that literacy is about reading, writing, speaking, listening, oral language development, vocabulary. So there are many ways to engage your child during the summer related to literacy that doesn't have specifically only to do with picking up a book and reading it. Um, again, all of the experiences you can provide to your child within your home and community um, just expands their reach and their understanding and helps them learn new vocabulary, which then transfers into when they're reading those books. And they say, oh, wait, I recognize that word because I saw it at the grocery store or something like that. So again, in your handouts, there's a ton of different suggestions. Um, I, I Hopefully you've gained a lot of information today and I won't go over all of those, but you'll be able to get those from your resources. Um, 
When you're out in the community, here's another good one, right? So you're shopping at the grocery store and you have your child, you can have them help make the shopping list, read the shopping list. They can read labels at the store. You can discuss prices. So, you know, there's mathematical literacy too, right? Um, quality of the produce. If you're looking at it going, yeah, I'm not going to buy that banana because it's black and black bananas are not my favorite unless you're making banana bread. So even just talking about um descriptions of different things, um, different ways that you can, you know, what does that mean? It's black. Oh, it's bruised. Someone dropped it. They might never have heard the word bruise before. So trying to incorporate different vocabulary and language as you talk about things. Um, Again, just giving them different experiences. Uh, if you go out to eat at a restaurant, bring bring along a pen and some paper so they can draw. Sometimes restaurants will even have activity, um, you know, placemats for them to to work on. Um, just there's a ton of different ways you can involve in, you know, involve yourselves and your children in literacy in the community. Um, you can play ABC games in the car. So uh, if anybody's familiar with the old license plate game, you know, as you're driving along and you start looking at different, um, different license plates and try to make your way through the alphabet, see who can win the game or just work together as a team and get it, you know, get it going. Um, keep a, fav a few favorite books in the car and make them only available to them when they're in that environment. It makes it special um, for them to be able to read them only in that, in that environment. All right, just have a few more, so hang in there. Um, obviously libraries rock for summer reading so um you know who can't beat going to the library once a week in the summer and um i know for us for for a long time it was like oh the the library has air conditioning so you can go and hang out and read a book and escape some of the sweltering summer heat um plus there's so many uh different variety of books that they can that they can get at the library so please you know utilize your library i encourage you to get involved in some of their programs that they have um, get your child a library card if they're old enough um, i think they, they have to be able to print their name so you can get them a library card um, and then they can have the joy of checking out their own books and keeping track of those and, and choosing their own um, you can talk to the librarian about what books would be good for your child. Uh, most libraries have a summer reading program. Um, this slide, unfortunately, did not get updated from last year. So um, the Tales and Tales was from last summer, but um, a lot of program, they have um, different topics that you can find at the library. Um, I looked for our local library and they had, um, programs not just for kids but all the way through adults where you could earn different um different uh levels of depending on what you're reading and then you could be entered into a drawing to win you know some kind of prize um as uh, most of the Wisconsin summer programs, you can download an app called Beanstack where kids can track their reading minutes and activities, and then they can earn those digital badges and then um, possibly turn them in for some prizes. Uh, here are some other summer reading program uh, activities for you to look, take a look at. Uh, Scholastic has a summer reading program. It's a free 14-week program that started on May 9th and goes through August 19th. Uh, you can log into the link and register on the home base, and then the child can record their minutes in uh, what's called Reading Streak and do different activities. And Scholastic will actually donate um, 100,000 books to kids who need them as part of the program. So um, you can, believe it or not, they're still doing Camp Book It with, um, with Pizza Hut. So kids can, I, I remember doing that as a kid where you could read books and then you can earn a little personal pan pizza. So those are some summer incentive um, programs that you can get involved in. So it's not just, uh, you know, uh, your own ideas, but utilize some of these programs. Um, YouTube Kids has a 20 minutes a day challenge, and then you see uh, Casey Adventures also has uh, challenges your child to explore areas of the library, and they have a little map that talks about different sections of the library and how they can find different um, genres of, 
of liter literature. I am going to move through these because you can see I'm not going to read through all of these resources. But again, if you download the handouts or if you contact me after the webinar, I can get you these handouts that have all of these links. And a lot of these are resources that I talked about throughout the webinar today. So I'm hoping that you were able to get some information today that you can use um, to support your child's literacy over the summer and beat the summer, summer slide. Um, another one of the handouts is a summer calendar. There's one for early childhood and one for elementary age children with different activities that you can do surrounding the components of liberty, literacy, pardon me. Um, and you can also use the calendar if you want to record what books your child read during the summer, um, hoping that you'll have lots of books that you can fill in on that on that calendar. Um, and just keep in mind that kids who have access to books and literacy activities over the summer can not only beat the summer slide, but they can actually make some gains over the summer and be ready to start the new school year better off than they were um, at the end of the last one. So. As promised, here is the information for contacting Wisconsin Facets. My name and email is on there, Lori Karcher, lkarcher at wisconsinfacets.org. Um, I also told you I'd have the QR code on there for you. So if you have your phone handy and you can um, use the QR code to get the link to the survey, would super appreciate if you would fill out the survey. Um, and I believe that is all I have for you today. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope you got a lot of great information. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy and enjoy your summer.